الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباد الذين اصطفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون الا ما كنتم تعملون صدق الله العظيم honorable ulama kiram respected brothers my dear young friends this ayah of surah yasin the 54th ayah was recited and in there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the occurrences and what will happen on the day of Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَالْيَوْمَ لَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا On this day of Qiyamah no soul shall be wronged in the least. وَلَا تُجِزَوْنَ إِلَّا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And you, O mankind, will be repaid only for what you did. <coughs> In this ruku of Surah Yaseen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions regarding the whole occurrence of the Qiyamah. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy the world. وَنُفِقَ فِي السُورِ فَإِذَا هُمْ مِنْ أَجْدَاتِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّمْ يَنْسِلُونَ And ثُمَّ نُفِقَ فِي أُخْرَىٰ And how a second time the trumpet will be blown and the whole of mankind will resurrect and how they will resurrect and slowly slowly they will all some will be running towards the plains of Qiyamah some will be pushed and forced to the plains of Qiyamah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ruku mentions in depth how this whole Qiyamah will take place and what the states of people will be and this belief in Qiyamah and on resurrection and Hisab Kitab is a funda- fundamental belief of the Muslims. It is a core Aqeedah. It is a very important Aqeedah. It is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions over and over again in the Quran. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions some very specific points. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over and over again mentions regarding his tawheed, his oneness. The second point which is greatly emphasized is the point in regards to the risalat and the prophethood of Rasulullah And the third most important point which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes and repeats over and over again in the Quran is this point of hereafter. And it is this belief in the hereafter which every Prophet from Adam salam till the last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam preached and passed on to their qawm and their nations. That this world is not just about living, enjoying yourself and that's the end of it. In fact, after a person dies, he will be resurrected once again. He will be brought to account. He will be asked questions. And then, depending on the results, there will only be two abodes. Either he will go to Jannat and he will have a lasting happy abode forever and ever or if the results were not right then he will, have, he will be doomed to Jahannam. And it is this belief that gives meaning to life. When you look into a believer's life the thing that gives him meaning in his life that I need to do something the thing that creates purpose is this belief. Or else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the disbelievers and he says Allah talks about the disbelievers and the notion and the underlining belief that they have is that leave them let them eat and let them enjoy and let them have long ambitions and big hopes very soon they will realize very soon they will understand why because just like we read in the ayah today, that they used to say, Aida mitna wa kunna turab, wa idaman aina al mabuthun, wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's saying, Aida mitna when we die, wa kunna turab, and we become soil, we mix in with the, with the soil, with the, with the mud, wa idaman, and our bones are all totally, our bones disappear, and they become powder. Aina al mabuthun, what are we going to be resurrected to? So they never used to believe in resurrection. So because they did not believe in resurrection, they thought, and even now, there is a massive group, a very large group of people in the whole world that don't believe in the hereafter. Atheists and so, and so many other people, they don't believe in the hereafter. 
So when they don't believe in the hereafter, then there is nothing for them. That means that whatever they want to pursue in this life, whatever enjoyment, there's no limits for them. There's no boundaries. There's no ethical ethics in their lives. That's why the chaos that we see in the world, the problems we see in the world, the injustice we see in the world, the wars we see in the world, one core reason is the people that are engaging and the people that are pushing this agenda are those people who have no belief in the hereafter, who have no belief in accountability, who have no belief that one day we'll have to stand before Allah That's why they're closing this chaos, thinking that this is the whole world. Let's live, enjoy, eat, drink, and let's pursue whatever we want, and let's fulfill our ambitions. If it means a cost of a human's life, millions of lives, thousands of lives, let it be as long as we get our enjoyment. But a believer's life is totally different. A Muslim thinks no. One day I have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will have to give an answer for everything. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. That, uh, the Rasulullah mentions that uh, Ibn Adam will not move from his, from his position on the day of Qiyamah hatta yusal wa arba until he will be asked regarding four things. An umri fi ma'afna. That how did you spend your life? On the day of Qiyamah Allah will ask each and every single person how did you spend your life? One shababi and then this is your general life. How did you spend your general life? What did you do? What did you eat? What did you look at? Did you spend your did you use your eyes in the correct way? Did you use your ears in the correct way? Allah SWT will ask you about your whole life. Wa'an shababi fi ma'afna, fi ma'abla. And secondly, he will ask you in regarding to your youth. The youth is your prime age. And how did you spend your youth? How do you spend your youth? So if a person has these questions before him all the time, you will see that totally his dimension of life will change. And when a person has none of this in, his, in the back of his mind, he's even conscious, he doesn't even think he's going to be resurrected, then you see this chaos. That's why Aqidah of hereafter, Aqidah of resurrection, Aqidah of facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so important that it keeps a person on track. And when this Aqidah is not there, then we see that what happens? Has it in Saharampur, there was a they used to they used to send people out to Uchanda. So there's a Molana as a Moran Manzur, Sab Kashmir Rahmatullah. He was a great alim and he used to go around doing chanda for Saharampur Darulum. At the time, the Nazim Sab and the Muhtamim and the principal was Hazrat Mawal Latif, Hazrat Molana Abdul Latif Sab. So this Hazrat Mawal Manzur Sab Kashmir Rahmatullah went to do chanda. And the rule in, in Saharampur was that daily when you go for chanda, so you have your expenses, you need to eat, etc. So they used to have a book and they used to write the expenses. So the Muhammad Zusab with his companions went to Luchanda and they would write that in the morning we had breakfast for three rupees. Afternoon, they had, they had a limit of five rupees. So in the afternoon, we ate dal roti and it cost four rupees. So they would pay with their money and then when they come back after doing the chanda, they will go to the office, they will give all the money that they have accumulated, that they have the donations that they have received. And along with that, they would put that paper. And on that paper would be their expenses. And then the Nazim sub, the principal, will repay them the expenses. So one day when they went out, Mawlana Manzoo Sahib, Dawud Barak Rahmatullah so when he came back, he gave his expense paper. And on that expense paper, he said in the afternoon, Pachas Pese, 50 pence, half a rupee. Half, half a rupee, what did he buy? Chana. So Chana is something mamuli, basic. So Hazrat Mawlana Abdul Latif Sahib called him. And he said, that, ye chana, ye chane ka sahi. What's this Chana for? This 50 Pese. So he said, Hazrat, that day we didn't eat. So instead of eating, we had this chana. He said, no. Because the dalum is responsible for your food. And food means staple food, means those things that fill your stomach. And chana is not counted as food, it is counted as tafakku. Tafakku means those foods that you eat for a little bit of enjoyment, like an apple, like a banana. An apple is not your basic necessity food. If a person is hungry and he's starving, he won't eat an apple. He looked for roti, he looked for salad, he looked for rice. So he said, Ye chane hai. And although it's 50 pesa, half a, half a rupee, the dalum is not going to pay for this. If you, had a, if you would have eaten that day and you'd have spent five rupees out of giving you five rupees, but I am not prepared to pay on behalf of dalum even 50 pesa, half a, half a rupee. And he said, Either come back and give me that 50 pesa or on the day of Qiyamah, get ready to answer Allah. Azawajal. This was the thought, this was their mind, this was the mind that they had. 
the process, thinking process, that I have to answer Allah, I have to answer Allah. When a person has this in front of him, then he will not do so many sins. He will think, I've got to answer to Allah SWT. I've got to stand before him. For his earnings, he will think 10 times, okay, this is a quick earning, but there's lying in here. How will I answer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on the day of I can make my way through lying, but Allah knows. Allah will know exactly what I'm doing. So when a person, when this thought penetrates a person's mind and heart, that I have to answer Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, he will see that his whole life will change. The dimension, the way he looks at things, will change. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned in this ayah that فَالْيَوْمَ لَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا وَلَا تُجْزَوْنَ إِلَّا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ that on this day, no person will be oppressed. No soul will be wrong. If you've done one, Ya Bunayya inna in taku mithqala habbatin min qardan, that Luqman alayhi salam, radiyallahu an, mentions to his son. What did he say? That Ya Bunayya inna in taku mithqala habba. Oh my son, if you would have cried out an atom's worth, what's an atom? You can't even see an atom. Of a good deed. In taku mithqala habbatin min qardan. Fatakun fi sakhratin. And that atom is in the midst of a rock. How are you going to find that? You've done a good deed, and where is that good deed? It's hidden in a rock. Oh, it's in the sky. How are you going to find an atom in the sky? Oh, it's sunk somewhere under the ground. Ya'ti bi Allah. Allah will bring it. Allah will put it on the day of Qiyamah on the scales. In the last ayat of Ida Zulzila, that. Mithqala dharratin khayra yara. Mithqala dharra. Dharra. What's dharra? An atom. What's, what's an atom? Ulama mentioned an atom is when, 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 there's, when there's sun, when, when there's a sunny day and the rays are coming through. How does it happen? Sometimes you have a small hole and you can see a ray of light coming in. So when you see a ray of light coming in, then in, the, in, the, in, in line with them rays, you will see some small atoms, dust particles flying around. So when they pass the ray of light, you can see them, and then they become, they disappear. When they come to that light, they appear and they disappear. How big is that atom? If you to wait, can you wait? If you try to hold it, will you hold it? But on the day of Kiyaman, Allah will even bring this. If you've done a good deed, which is the size of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that anything you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it and He will reward you. Nothing will go to waste. It's not that you've done a good deed in the middle of the night and Allah will no, Allah will bring it to Allah. Allah will bring it and it will be put on the scale and you will be rewarded for it. And and you will not be wrong, meaning in this world when sometimes there is a witch hunt and this person is a political leader or jobio and all of a sudden there's court cases against him. What happens? There's a one court case or a thousand against him. A million allegations against him. A thousand allegations against him. This court case, this, Allah says no. On the day of Qiyamah, you will have no false allegations against you. Everything will be clear cut. And the day of Qiyamah, Allah, when we, whilst we are alive, we have two angels. We have two angels. And they are writing, Kiram and Katibin. They are writing exactly what we are doing. And the minute our soul goes, the book is closed and it is stamped, finished. When will this, day open? When will this book open? This book will open at the Qiyamat now. Allah will say, Ikra kitabak, read, read for yourself. Your answers are in your book. You will know, you will to judge for yourself whether you are going to Jannat or whether you're going the other way. So Allah says in the Quran, the kitab, the kitabs, the scripts will be put down. The Mujrims, the criminals, they will be fearful and they will read this book. I said, Mali had al kitab. What's wrong with this book? What's happened? Is not left anything minute, anything big, anything small. Nothing's been missed out. Everything is clearly written in this book. Everything. That's what Allah says. You matajid kulaf si maamet min khairi muhdara, wa maamet min su. Tawdulu anna bainha wa bainu abdan baida. On the day of kiamat, you matajid kulaf si maamet. Every soul will see exactly what he did. Wa maamet min su. All the good he done will be there. All the bad he done will be there. What will happen today? At that moment, every person will hope that only if between me and this book there was millions of miles away, millions of miles apart, that I never had to see this book, I never had to read this book. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that on the day of Qiyamah, every person will be accounted for. And Ulama mentioned that the account will take place in different ways. Some people will go to Jannah without accountability. Also, some says that 
uh, I was shown, Rasulullah was shown a vision that a, a Nabi with one Ummati, a Nabi walking without no Ummati, and then he saw one Nabi and a mountain full of people, so many people. So I saw asked him the dream, God gave me this GBS or some came in the dream that who's this people? He said, this is Musa والسلام, and his Ummat, his nation. So I said, look, he said, Aina Ummati, where's my Ummat then? So Rasulullah was shown his Ummat. Was, well, how, how much of an Ummat was it? Rasulullah said, when I looked, the whole horizon was filled. You look on the right, so many people. You look on the left, so many people. You look in front, everywhere, all you see is people upon people. And Hazrat Jibi said, Hada Ummat, this is your Ummat, O Rasulullah. Said, your Ummat is the most, the last Ummat, but the greatest Ummat, the most in number. Then he said, that, Sab'una alfan jannata bi that out of these people, 70,000 will go into Jannah without any reckoning. So the first category of people will be those that Allah subhanahu will not even ask a question. They will enter Jannah without Hisab. And once Rasul was mentioning this, and a Sahabi by the name of Ukash ibn Muhibihsan, as soon as Rasul said this, Sabuna al that 70,000 people will enter Jannah without any reckoning, I said, Ukash ibn Muhibihsan stood up straight away. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, Udullah is Ali Ya Rasulullah, make dua that I am amongst them. Rasul made dua. They go, how much attention would have been? That's why it's very important. When Bayan's going on, you should listen to attention. But straight away, he, took, he grasped the opportunity. He grasped the opportunity. Ya Rasulullah. When he stood up, then after him, another Sahabi stood up. Ya Rasulullah, Udullah is Ali Rasulullah said, Sabakaka Ukasha. Ukasha beat you. So Ulama mentioned that possibility Rasulullah was given, uh, Rasulullah was given one chance to make dua for one person. And Ukasha beat him. So they go, he was listening to attention, and he made dua straight away. So the first category of people will be those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not reckon at all. And Ulama said, mentioned that another group of people that will be will enter Jannah without reckoning is who? Which qaim? The standing person will go in Jannah without his sab. Which, which one is this? That person who stood up in the middle of the night, Tahajjud. That Tahajjud Guzar will go to Jannah without his sab. And Ghaliban is a hadith by one of the uh, one of the females of Rasulullah's time, she mentions that Rasulullah mentioned that out of the Ummah, there will be some people that will go to Jannah without Hisab and out of them will be those people whose sides did not touch the bed, meaning they were awake in the middle of the night. That's why Ghalib Hassan Basir, Rahmatullah, after he passed away, he was seen in a dream. So people asked him, Hazrat, what happened? Hazrat Basir Umtullah was a big Buzruk, big Sheikh, Muhaddith, Mufassid, such a great person. What did he say? فَمَا نَفَعْنَا Nothing helped me. What helped me? Those, those few rakats that I used to perform at the time of tahajjud, it is through the barakah of them that I have entered Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me Jannah upon these small, small rakats. But tahajjud is very important. Ramadan is easy. We are already away for say, make a habit from now. That tahajjud has it in, in Bukhari shape. Uh, hadith mentioned uh, Zabdullah ibn Umar Zabdullah ibn Umar the Allah mentions that in, after Fajr it was a ma'mul of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his ma'mul that he would ask the sahaba anybody seen a dream the sahaba would say I saw a dream and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa interpret the dreams sometimes Rasulullah would not ask in fact he said tonight I saw a dream and he would interpret so Abdullah ibn Umar was a small child so he used to see this and he used to think yeah, only if I saw a dream I want, to, I want to see a dream as well so one day in Bukhari he mentioned at night he saw a dream and what did he see he saw a dream that two angels took him towards a place where there was a fire going on. And the fire was going on, and every so often the fire was erupting. And people's bodies were coming in, those people that he recognized. So Abdullah ibn Umar became very scared. So he tried to run. A small boy, he tried to run. So when he tried to run, the two angels that were with him, they held him. And they said, don't be scared, don't be scared. And he woke up. So Abdullah ibn Umar, the was a small child. So he wanted to know the interpretation of this dream. But he was a bit shy. That how can I ask the Rasulullah a small person? People think, yeah, they go to that. He's seeing a dream as well, jovial. So he didn't ask the Rasulullah. What did he do? He asked his sister. Who was his sister? Who was his sister? Abdullah ibn Umar. Anybody? Hazrat Hafsa radiallahu anha. Hazrat Hafsa radiallahu anha. Who was Hazrat Hafsa radiallahu anha? Aswaji Muttahad, the, the wife of Rasulullah. So he told his sister, oh, my sister, next time you're with Rasulullah, ask him that Abdullah seen this dream. So she asked. He said, Abdullah, Ni'mar Rajul Abdullah. Abdullah is a very good person. Only if he paid tahajjud. Rasulullah did not interpret the dream. Only he said, was only if he paid tahajjud. 
So Muhaddisi mentioned that what does this mean? What's, what's the correlation between seeing a dream and getting scared and praying tahajjud? So Muhaddisi mentioned that when a person performs tahajjud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him taqwiyat in his heart. His heart becomes very strong. And once I read in Hazrat Shaykh Rahmatullah, Hazrat Shaykh Zakran Rahmatullah, he said that those people who are punctual with tahajjud, their hearts become very strong. They become scared. They were spiritually very hard, strong, very hard, strong one, not a hard in meaning a very strong heart. So, Ulama mentioned that in the Quran, Allah SWT says, وَمِيَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِي نَافِلَةً لَكَ أَسَّى يَبَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَوَى مَحْمُودًا That in the night, O Rasulullah SAW, O Muhammad SAW, praise of tahajjud as nafal. Why? أَسَّى يَبَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَوَى مَحْمُودًا In the benefit, what's the benefit of this? That surely we will take you on the Maqam Mahmud. What's Maqam Mahmud? Maqam Mahmud is that exclusive position and status of Rasulullah SAW where on the day of Qiyamah, Rasulullah SAW will do Shafaat Kubra. What's Shafaat Kubra? Shafaat Kubra is when all the ummats will be, every person from Adam Salaam, till the last person will be in so much anxiety, so much stress, so much depre depressed mahul that Allah SWT, everyone's there sweating but Allah SWT is not starting the Hisab Kitab. That's why I say that sometimes I say al intidhar wa shaddu mil maut that sometimes waiting for something is even worse than death. So they'll be all waiting. So say, then what, what happened? So there will be the I'm taking too much time now. I'm going to finish off in the last bit. So they will be inspired. So they will be inspired to go to Nur Salaam and tell Nur Salaam to intercede before Allah so that, so that Allah SWT starts the Hisab Kitab. So all the ummahs will go to, all the people, delegation will get together from different, different ummahs and they will go to Adam Salaam that you are Abu Insan. You are the father of the humans. Please intercede on our behalf and tell Allah SWT, start. we've been waiting, it's hot. We're all in anxiety, in fear, in stress. So Adam said, no, no, I, that's not me, I can't do that. I can't do that. Uh, because he'll say, that, he'll excuse himself that I ate from the tree, I shouldn't have ate, so I, I can't stand. I, I'm looking for myself, nafsi, nafsi. I, if, I, if I get pardoned myself, so he'll say, go to Nuh. So the old the delegation will go, Nuh is Sarusan, then here, then take Musa is Sarusan, Isa is until right at the end they will go to Rasulullah Sarusan. When they'll go to Rasulullah Sarusan, Anil, 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 this is my job. And Rasulullah Sarusan will go to in front of the Arsh of Allah and he will fall in sajda. And he says, at that time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired me what du'as to recite. And I will pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Ya Muhammad Ishfa Rasul, O Muhammad Sarusan, Sarusan, raise your head, Sal, Tu'ta, and ask me what do you want. At that time Rasulullah Sarusan will say, that, Ya yeah, yeah Allah, start the Hisab Kitab. The people are waiting. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start the Hisab This is called Maqam Mahmud. This is called Shafad Kubra. So Ulama mentioned on here, what do we say is, when, when Rasulullah said, we know, it's mentioned, Hadith, who's going who's gonna to do Shafad? Who's eligible for Shafad Kubra? Prophet says, so why, why is the Ummah going to Adam Why are they going to Nuh Why are they going to Musa Why are they Isa Why? What does he mention? Why? Because if the delegation would have gone to straight to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he would have done it, then there's a possibility that the Yahuds would have said what? Oh, if you have gone to Musa, even Musa would have done this. Or the Isa, the Nasara would say that if you have gone to Isa, even our Prophet would have been able to do it. And the followers of Nur would have said that you went to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam first. If you have gone to Nur, then even our Prophet would have been able to intercede. So. To show the state of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa will make them go around to every single Nabi until every single Nabi will say, this is not for us. So that when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does it, then no other Ummati would, have been, would be able to say that even my, my Nabi could have done this. To show that the state of Rasulullah is so. So, Ulama mentioned that this ayat in the Quran, Rumi al-Layli is talking to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi that through the barakah of Tahajjud, you will get Maqami Mahmud. But Tahajjud in the Quran is not just for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is it for? It's for all of us. So what do we get? If Rasulullah prays Tahajjud, he gets Maqai Mahmud. When we pray Tahajjud, what do we get? So Muhaddithin and Mufassi mentioned that what do we get? We get Mahmud. Maqai Mahmud for us is what? Mahmud means Ta'rif Kiyawa, Ham Kiyawa. That those people who are punctual on Tahajjud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them Mahmud, meaning this dunya, in this world, they will be praised. When a person gets praised, what happens? He gets elevated in Izza, in respect. People listen to him. When he says something, people listen straight away. When he asks for something, people are ready to do khidmat. Your bar the barakat of your tahajjur is that in the hearts of people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will input love and put praise in their hearts and they will praise you. And when they praise you, why you? 
you are a living king. You are a king without a throne, without a crown, but you are a king in people's hearts. So, Ramadan, last week we mentioned, what was, was the lesson we mentioned last week? That between Fajr and Fajr, Sunnah and Fajr, Salah, we should do what? We should do what? Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, La ilaha illa, 40 times. That does what? Ahiya Allah Qalbahu. And today's lesson is what? That let's try to become punctual. Salah Tahjur. Pray, even if it's Muqtasar, even if it's a small five minute one, but start. Ramadan is the best time to start. And start your Tahjur Salah. And slowly, slowly increase and make this a whole lifetime ma'amul. As a uh, last story, as a Mawashid of Mugawi, Ramtulallah, he had a Khalifa. He had a Murid by his Shah Ahmed Sabahmatullahi. He was Shah Ahmed Sabahmatullahi, very pious person, old age person. And one day somebody called him in, in, in India, in Gongo, in, around there, they called him to Hazrat. We are building a house, come and put the first brick. He says, Barkati Topper, people do this. That they, when they buy a house, they call the, uh, the my court mufti, say, okay, Hazrat, you put your feet first, they buy a car, Hazrat, you sit, why Barkat? Okay, pious person, he sits in the house first, he goes in the house first, so Barkat will come. So they call him, Hazrat, we're going to build a house, you put the first brick. So he told another Mawlana, okay, young, young Alim, okay, Mawlana, come with me, you have to go Fulana. So they were going, and it was, a, it was a day's journey. So when they went there, by the time they got there, Hazrat Shah Ahmad Sabah Mutulali, by the time on the journey, he had diarrhea, and by the time they got there, he was very, very weak. But before they left, he said, look, we're going on a journey, there's three of us, let's make an Amir. And this is one of the Sunnahs, that when a person goes on a journey, he should make an Amir. So he said, who should make an Amir? So they made, Hazrat Shah Ahmad Sabah Mutulali, made the other youngster, young Alim Amir. So when they got there to a place, and tomorrow is the day where they're going to, the house is going to start building. By the time he got there, he was exhausted, and his stomach was running. So he went to sleep. So the Amir Sahib said to him, okay, Hazrat, so at, at night, about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, he woke up to pay tajud. So that person also, the young Ali woke up, because Hazrat, no, no, you, you go back to sleep because you weak, kalto, wo bayan bhi karna hai, or you have to put the lay the first brick. So after what comes, well, you can't do this. So he said, Bhai, he thought Amir was you have to listen to Amir, so he went back to sleep. One hour before Subha Sadiq, he woke up again. And he went to the feet of that person and he started pressing and he was crying. So the young Molana woke up and he goes, Hazrat, Hazrat, kya hua, kuch taklif. For 57 years since the day I didn't bear to us, for 57 years I have never missed the hajjud on one night. Or I'm going to miss the hajjud. If, if you give me permission, please let me pay the hajjud. Because you're the Amir, I don't want to go against you. But you're saying, no, don't pray. And for 57 years I've not missed it. So please give me uh, the permission to please go. Hazrat, go. This is when a person becomes Paban, then you'll see Allah SWT bring so many fruits. And Gai Ibn al-Qaim mentioned that if a person wants risk, usable risk, if you want risk sustenance, then what should a person do? Qiyamullah. Wake up for tahajjud. Tahajjud will attract, tahajjud will bring risk into your house.